The only way you end rape culture is by embedding in society and openly talked about, promoted, operated, and very importantly, aspired to gold standard of what constitutes good sexual values and good sexual behavior. Take control, control of your life. Break the chains and rise. No more feeling powerless. No more shame. Take your power, break out of the pain. Because it's more than fornication, more than procreation. It's not just self stimulation. Sex energy is for creation and transformation into a new destination. This is Porn Talk. Porn Talk. This is Porn Talk. Welcome to Porn Talk. This is Powerful Eric. This show is not just about breaking addictions. It's about breaking belief systems. We are bound by self-imposed and societal chains. Break those rusty, nasty old chains. Get empowered right now. Today, we have I have a very unique, controversial guest with us today. Her name is Cindy Gallup. Cindy has found a very unique niche. When I first started my podcast, I said there was a healthy use of porn. But then I discovered sex trafficking and how drug cartels are involved in all that. And really like tube sites like Pornhub, for example, are really not in the porn business or in the money laundering business. And then so I finally, I said, I can't say that there's a healthy use of porn. Well, anyway, a friend of mine turned me on to Cindy, and I want to let Cindy tell her story in her her own words. It's very unique. Uh, Welcome, Cindy. Thank you, Eric. And can I just say that there is absolutely nothing niche about what I'm doing with Make Love Not Porn. I, I designed Make Love Not Porn to be bigger than porn. Okay. So thr- thrilled to be here to talk about it. Yeah. So tell me, how how did that come about? How did you decide to make the website? Sure. So Make Love Not Porn is a complete and total accident because I never consciously and intentionally set out to do anything I very bizarrely find myself doing now. Um, It came about through my direct personal experience dating younger men. The men I date tend to be in their 20s. And about 14, 15 years ago now, I began realizing through dating younger men that I was encountering an issue that would never have crossed my mind if I had not encountered it so very intimately and personally. I realized that I was experiencing what happens when two things converge. And I stress the dual convergence, Eric, because most people think it's only one thing. I realized I was encountering what happens when today's total freedom of access to hardcore porn online meets our society's equally total reluctance to talk openly and honestly about sex. When those two factors converge, porn becomes sex education by default in not a good way. Mm -hmm. So I found myself encountering a number of sexual behavioral memes in bed. I went, whoa, I know where that behavior is coming from. (laughs) I thought, gosh, if I'm experiencing this, other people must be as well. I didn't know that because 14, 15 years ago, no one was talking about this. Nobody was writing about it. This was me in isolation as a naturally action-oriented person going, I'm going to do something about this. So 13 years ago, I put up on No Money a tiny clunky website at makelovenotporn.com that in its original iteration was just words. The construct was porn world versus real world. Here's what happens in porn world. Here's what really happens in the real world. I launched Make Love Not Porn at the TED conference in 2009. I became the only TED speaker to say the words, come on my face, on the TED stage, six (laughs) times in succession. Um, The talk went viral as a result. 
And it drove this extraordinary global response to my tiny website that I had never anticipated. Wow. Thousands of people wrote to me from every single country in the world, young and old, men and female, straight and gay, pouring their hearts out, telling me things about their sex lives and their porn watching habits they'd never told anybody before. And I realized I'd uncovered a huge global social issue. Mm -hmm. And so I then felt that I had a personal responsibility to take Make Love Not Porn forwards in a way that would make it much more far-reaching, helpful, and effective. But I also saw an opportunity to do what I believe in very strongly, which is that the future of business is doing good and making money simultaneously. I saw the opportunity for a big business solution to this huge untapped global need. And I use the word big advisedly, Eric, because even then, 13 years ago at concept stage, I knew if I wanted to counter the global impact of porn as default sex ed, I would have to come up with something that at least had the potential one day to be just as mass, just as mainstream, and just as all pervasive in our society as porn currently is. Mm -hmm. So thinking very big right from the get-go. So what I decided to do was, I always emphasize to people that make love not porn is not anti-porn because the issue isn't porn. The issue is that we don't talk about sex in the real world. Yes. Because the issue isn't porn. The issue is that we don't talk about sex in the real world. Yes. Uh, yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. Especially in the United States. In yep. the United States. Yep. If we yep. did, amongst many benefits I will come on to, um, that would also enable people to bring a real world mindset to the viewing of what is simply performative produced entertainment. Mm -hmm. And so our tagline at Make Love Not Porn is, we are pro-sex, pro-porn, pro-knowing the difference. And our mission is one thing only, which is to help make it easier for every single person in the world to talk openly and honestly about sex. And to do that in two respects. A, in the public domain, and by that I mean parents to children, teachers to schools, everyone to everyone, but B, and even more crucially, to talk about sex openly and honestly, privately, in our intimate relationships. Mm -hmm. And the reason that's so key is, because we don't talk about sex, it is an area of rampant insecurity for every single one of us. But B, and even more crucially, to talk about sex openly and honestly, privately, in our intimate relationships. Mm -hmm. And the reason that's so key is, because we don't talk about sex, it is an area of rampant insecurity for every single one of us. Yes. We all get vulnerable when we get naked. Sexual ego is very fragile. People therefore find it bizarrely difficult to talk about sex to the people they're actually having it with while they're actually having it. <laughs> Because in, that, because in that situation, Eric, you are terrified that if you say anything at all about what is going on, if you comment on the action any way at all, you will potentially hurt the other person's feelings, you'll put them off you, you will derail the encounter, you'll potentially derail the entire relationship, but at the same time, you want to please your partner. You want to make them happy. Everybody wants to be good in bed. Nobody knows exactly what that means. And so you will seize your cues on how to do that from any way you can. And if the only cues you've ever seen are in porn, because your parents never talked about sex, because your school didn't teach you, because your friends aren't honest, those are the cues you're going to take to not very good effect. So given this mission of talk about it, I decided very simply to take every dynamic in social media and apply them to this one area of universal human experience that no other social network platform will allow in order to socialize sex and to make real world sex and talking about it socially acceptable and therefore ultimately just as socially shareable as anything else we share on Facebook, Tumblr, Twitter, Instagram. So um, 10 years ago now, my tiny team and I launched the first stage of this vision. And I say the first stage because... I've had an entire roadmap planned out for Make Love Not Porn from day one, but I've never been able to raise the funding to build it out. And I'm, 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 I'm setting out to do that now. Mm -hmm. So the first stage is makelovenotporn.tv, which is an, it is an entirely user-generated, crowdsourced video sharing platform that celebrates real-world sex. And let me, let, me ask, let me ask you this. 
What yes. is the difference between real world sex and? I'm, I'm about to come on. I'm, I'm about to okay. come on and tell you. Okay. So, so anybody from anywhere in the world can submit to us videos of themselves having real world sex, but we are very clear what we mean by this. We are not porn. We are not amateur. We are building a whole new category on the internet that has never before existed, social sex. And so our competition isn't porn, it's Facebook and YouTube. Or rather, it would be if they allowed you to socially, sexually self-express, which they don't. And so social sex videos on Make Love Not Porn are not about performing for the camera. They are simply about doing what we all already do on every other social platform in every other area of life, which is capture what goes on in the real world as it happens spontaneously in all its funny messy, loving, beautiful, comical, awkward, hilarious humanness. And we curate to make sure of that. I designed Make Love Not Porn through the female lens to be the safest place on the internet. And that's because I designed it around what everybody else should have, nobody else did, human curation. There is no self-publishing of anything on Make Love Not Porn. Our curators watch every frame of every video submitted from beginning to end before we approve or reject it and we publish it. Nobody else does that. Our curators also review every post on every member profile before we approve or reject and we publish it. And, and by the way, on Make Love Not Porn, your profile posts can be as safe work or not safe work as you like, but we review every single one and we publish it. We review every single comment on every single video before we approve and publish it. We can vouch for every single piece of content on our platform in a way that nobody else can. And I designed Make Love Not Porn around a revenue sharing business model to democratize access to income. So I foresaw the creator economy 13 years ago. Our members pay to subscribe, rent, and stream social sex videos. Half the income goes to our contributors, whom we call our Make Love Not Porn stars. And if it's okay with you, Eric, I'd like to drill a bit more into what I mean by social sex. Because we are, we are doing something utterly unique. And as a result, we have an utterly unique capability. Make Love Not Porn has the power to change people's sexual attitudes and behavior for the better in a way that nothing else does. So, so for example, social sex videos on Make Love Not Porn are enormously reassuring because we celebrate real world everything. Real world bodies, real world hair, real-world penis size, real-world <laughs> breast size, real-world vulvas. And the reason that's important, Eric, is because you can talk body positivity all you like. You can preach self-love till you're blue in the face. At the end of the day, nothing makes us feel great about our own bodies, like seeing people who are no one's idea of aspirational body types getting turned on by each other, <laughs> desiring each other, having a wonderful time in bed. Our mantra, Make Love Not Porn, is everybody is beautiful when they're having real world sex, and they really are. And so our members write to us and say, you made me feel better about my own body. You know, one man wrote and said, my girlfriend and I now feel able to be more open and sensual with each other because you made each of us feel better about our own body. Then, very importantly, at Make Love Not Porn, we celebrate real world emotion, love, intimacy, feeling. Yes. And, and the reason that's crucial, Eric, is because, you know, all around us in popular culture, we, you know, movies, TV, Netflix, we see many creative expressions and narratives of relationships, but we never see the actual sex. On Make Love Not Porn, you see the actual sex, but you also see the relationships. Yes. Because in our videos, those two things are indivisible. And when I say that, Eric, I don't just mean that in our coupled partner threesome videos, you see healthy, loving relationship dynamics within sex. In our many solo videos, because we have a ton of masturbation videos, male, female, trans, non-binary, in those solo videos, you see what it's like to have a healthy relationship with yourself, with your own body, your own genitals, your own sexuality. But here's the overarching goal of all of this, Eric, um, and this is the last thing I'll say, and I'll stop the massive dump of, of you know, um, everything I'm doing on you. Um, so. Um, when I say to people, you know, that ambitious is a very simple thing, make it easy to talk about sex. Because we don't do that currently, people don't get how massively 
profoundly societally transformative that would be. And here's what I mean. I designed Make Love Not Porn around all my own beliefs and philosophies. One of which is that everything in life starts with you and your values. And so I regularly ask people this question, what are your sexual values? And nobody can ever answer me because we're not- That's a great question. Um, Our parents bring us up to have good manners, a work ethic, sense of responsibility, accountability. Nobody ever brings us up to behave well in bed, but they should. Because in bed, values like empathy, sensitivity, generosity, kindness, honesty, trust, respect are as important as those values are in every other area of our lives where we're actively taught to exercise them. So this is my vision for a world in which I finally get Make Love Not Porn funded to operate at scale as the Facebook of social sex, because that's how big I want to be globally. When that happens, here's the world we'll live in. Parents will bring their children up openly to have good sexual values and good sexual behavior in exactly the same way that parents currently bring their kids up to have good values and behavior in every other area of life. We will therefore cease to bring up rapists. Yes. Because the only way you end rape culture, and by the way, Eric, this really is the only way, is by embedding in society and openly talked about promoted, operated, and very importantly, aspired to gold standard of what constitutes good sexual values and good sexual behavior. When we do that, we also end Me Too. We end sexual harassment, abuse, violence, all areas where the perpetrators currently rely on the fact that we do not talk about sex to ensure victims never speak up, never go to authorities, never tell anybody. When we end that, we massively empower women and girls worldwide. When we do that, we create a far happier world for everybody, including men. And when we do that, we are one step closer to world peace. I talk about men as my attempt to bring about world peace, and I'm not joking. And so basically, Eric, at Make Love Not Porn, we call ourselves the social sex revolution. The revolutionary part is not the sex. It's the fact we're making it social. Right. Wow. Like, wow. Uh, There's so many things. Well, first of all, being able to talk about sex. So I can remember when I was a little boy, uh, I'm one of the very, very few people that did have a little bit of tiny little sex talk. I, so when I was very young, I don't know how young, my dad basically gave me the birds and the bees talk, you know. And then uh, when I was a little older, this is kind of funny. I was in my bedroom with my girlfriend. She was sitting on my lap and we were, we were completely clothed. But we were kissing and my dad happened to walk in and uh, it was kind of funny. It startled him and he walked out of the room and he closed the door. <laughs> but uh, uh, so anyway, that evening, my dad had a more uh, a more in-depth conversation. Yeah. <laughs> but, out, but outside of that, um, that was it. Like there, I was raised in a strict uh, Catholic household and we just... Um, you know, my parents are great people, but it just wasn't something that really we mm. ever talked about. I mean, that was it. Those two tiny little talks was it. Mm. And like you said, there needs to be an ongoing dialogue about sex. And that's why my the title of the, the my my show is called Porn Talk. It's like we're gonna talk about porn, we're gonna talk about sex because. These parents that think that, oh, my my darling little child, you know, is not going to want or watch porn. Okay, let's say that's true. Well, then their friends are going to show it to them and or they're going to stumble across it accidentally. Exactly. And and that is why, Eric. um, So parents and teachers have been writing to me since day one of Make Love Not Porn. And in fact, I'm I'm raising funding now um, in order to build out what I call the zero to 18 version of Make Love Not Porn, Make Love Not Porn Academy, which will be sex, sex education. But, um, but here are the two pieces of advice that I've had to give to parents all the time over the 13 years I've been working on this. So the first thing I say to parents is, today, you cannot begin talking to your child about sex too early. And when I say that, I don't mean literally talk about sex. What I mean is, The very first time they ask where babies come from, they play with their genitals, the most important thing isn't even what you say as much as how you say it. Never ever get visibly flustered. 
never get embarrassed, never get angry, never shut them up. Instead, answer them calmly, straightforwardly, honestly, truthfully, and you will open up a channel of communication that will always be there between the two of you as they get older, and you'll want that. And then the second thing I say to parents is, today, when you talk to your child about sex, you must also, at the same time, talk to your child about porn. And this yes. is a lot and this is a lot easier to do than most parents think, because all you have to do is say a version of what I'm, I'm about to share with you, and you dial it up or down depending on the age of the child. So you say some along lines of, so darling, we've just talked about sex. And you know how together we watch movies and videos and cartoons where things happen that aren't real. Well, there are also movies and videos about sex, and they're not real either. And because of that, they can be quite confusing. And so we'd rather you didn't actually watch them till you're older. But if anybody ever shows you something like that, or you stumble across it, come and talk to us, come and talk to me, I can explain it. That's all you have to say. Because just by saying that, you've done two really important things. First of all, you've set up in your child's mind when they stumble across porn at an early age, as they will, sadly, that it's not real. And the second thing you've done is you've said, come and talk to me about it. And you will want them to do that because what they stumble across may be utterly traumatizing. Yeah. And you're absolutely right. The, what we see, pornography, it's not real. It's like, it's like watching a, a, a cartoon. It's, 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 it's make-believe. You know, there's, with, there's, there's cameras, there's a crew, there's, you know, it, it's not real. It's not real. And that's what I don't think, uh, well, no kid could, could know that. That this is not this is not real sex. No, but, no, but because because the point about this is, Eric, you know, all of us are dying to know more about sex. Okay, um, it's completely natural. We're all sexual beings, you know. And, and by the way, you know, we're talking about the one universal area of human experience we're almost fucked up about. And because of that, um, we've defaulted it in the way we talk about it to an act, to a thing we do. It's not. It's personality, you know. Our sexuality is what drives everything about us, you know, how we feel about ourselves, our relationships, you know, our lives, our happiness. And so um, um, something that I'm really thrilled about is that many parents write to us and tell us that they are buying their teenage and 20-something children's subscriptions to Make Love Not Porn because they want them to see what happy, healthy, loving sexual relationships look like. And, you know, as I mentioned earlier, Eric, a very important part of what we do at Make Love Not Porn is it's not just what we do, it's the way that we do it. We are socializing and normalizing sex in the real world. We are bringing it out into the sunlight. We're celebrating it joyously. And, and the reason that's so important is because in 13 years of fighting an enormous battle to keep this business going, and by the way, we fight a battle every day, every piece of business infrastructure other tech startups take for granted we can't. The small print always says no adult content. Everything's a nightmare. But I can tell you that, you know, I have 13 years worth of emails, comments, conversations. For 13 years, I have seen up close every single day the enormous human misery and unhappiness caused by the shame, guilt and embarrassment that we imbue sex with. Shame. And I'm working yep. to explode all of that. I've got to cut it short this week. However, Cindy Gallup will be back next week and be sure to tune in. She's going to share what she learned by dating much younger men. The two things that young men are sexually clueless about and more. See you then. Join powerful Eric's free Facebook group. Endeavor to quit and take control of your life. Learn more at PowerfulEric.com.